Welcome to another AMA with Kadena Project Network. In this episode, we will be speaking with the team from DocuShield. This conversation was recorded on May 25th, 2022, live on Twitter Spaces. The views and expressions in this AMA do not represent the views of KPN directly and are not to be considered as financial advice. Please make sure to do your own research on the projects presented. Also, make sure to follow our account to be alerted of new uploads. Now let's get started. Enjoy. Hey, how's it going? Going good. How are you? I'm um, not too bad, man. Not too bad. How about yourself? I'm um, good. Um, wait, who on the Duck Shield team oh. is this? Is this Adrian? <laughs> yeah, this is Adrian. Uh, and who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Manatee. What's going on, we man? A while, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, you were actually one of the um, one of the first people from the community that I that I spoke with. So, um, thanks for that, man. Introducing yourself from the get go and just being uh, super welcoming. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It was very early. Yeah, thinking back on that, crazy. <laughs> for sure, man. Um, so, do you want to? We want to wait for some people to join in, or you want to? You want to get going? <laughs> Uh, we'll probably wait another four minutes, three minutes, just so that people okay. can get in, awesome. and then we'll get ahead. And start it. Awesome, awesome. Um, also, just wanted to say, I mean, we had a little miscommunication with uh, with some of the uh, people over at the uh, Turkish uh, in the Turkish community, uh, Kadena, Turkey, and um, you know, just apology for that. It was a miscommunication, and uh, some things were kind of lost in translation. But um, I think we've rectified everything. But I just want to say to anybody from the Turkey community that may be listening, um, apologize apologize and we didn't forget about you guys um we got y'all covered so um yeah <laughs> also we just want to say thank you to Terra spaces for being here hopefully you guys uh get your grant soon if you haven't gotten it already um excited to have you guys be more active in the ecosystem even though you are extremely active now so thank you guys What's up, Terra Spaces? Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of what they have been doing. Cool stuff uh, with the podcasts that are ongoing and just um, absorbing everything that's out there and putting it for, um, you know, in one like localized place is, is really great to see. All right, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, hey, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Uh, and thank you, Adrian, for showing up to speak with us today. Uh, very excited to get into DocuShield and, you know, see what it's all about and show it to the rest of the Kadena community. Definitely, man. Definitely. So, yeah, once again, thank you, everyone, for coming. Hopefully, you're going to enjoy the space. And uh, if at any time you need to leave the space, just know it's going to be recorded, and you're going to be able to listen back. You can go on the Terra Spaces website if you want to do that. They'll put out a tweet, or you can just come here and listen to the recording on Twitter Spaces. So, yep. So, I guess we'll get started. Uh, hi, I'm Manatee Crypto. Uh, Basically, I'm just going to be kind of hosting this AMA, uh, and we're going to be opening up to some community questions later down the line. Uh, and today, we're just going to be talking about DocuShield and what they're going to be, you know, uh, bringing to the Kadena ecosystem and to the overall Web3 world and how they're going to bring the next billion users in through Kadena. So really cool stuff. So if you don't mind, do you want to introduce yourself in DocuShield? Sorry, was I muted or something? <laughs> I can't tell my phone's a bit bugged out. Hey, all right, man. I think I'm back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it um, never fails. There's always something with uh with the Twitter, yeah, space. Twitter spaces. Yep. Sometimes it straight up crashes. So luckily that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, man. But um, let me know. Let me know if if this is fine. I'm on my other uh on my other phone. The last one was kind of bugging out. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So if you don't mind just kind of giving us an introduction about yourself and DocuShield. Sure. Yeah. My name is Adrian Marquez. I'm the uh, founder behind DocuShield. And um, DocuShield is a project on Kadena that essentially came to life um, when I realized there wasn't a place to securely store um, your data, you know, and it really, it really hit me when not, not for my personal data, honestly, but uh, when I had my firstborn son, um, I all of a sudden had all this stuff like a birth certificate, all these insurance papers and Medi-Cal and all, all these things that I needed to keep track of that were very important. And, um, you know, I'm one of those people that, um, you know, I read up on, on privacy a lot and I see all the different exploits and, you know, the ones that uh, there's a, there's a website called, um, have you been that kind of, you put your email in and it tells you, um, you know, how many 
um, different breaches your address has been associated with. That's something I kind of always reference. And, you know, it's um, a lot of people's information is out there more than you think. So I'm trying to find a solution for that. Obviously, you know, went to the blockchain just because I love, you know, the technology behind it. I've been in the space uh, since about 2017. And, um, you know, after looking at a few things and drawing out some architecture and, and you know, communicating with some really smart people, uh, I was able to, you know, put together what was the groundwork for the DocuShield app and what really makes, you know, this solution different than any other solution that's out there is that um, nobody has access to your data. So there's no centralized keys. There's no, you know, uh, there's no master decryptor or anything like that. Um, the only way that your documents can be decrypted um, um, is when they're in your possession or being held in your wallet. So essentially the DocuShield app is a wallet, although we don't really refer to it that way. But um, yeah, it, um, it's, good what, it's gonna be what's used to hold your access NFTs. So um, those access NFTs, once they realize that they're home and they can decrypt from that, that home wallet, then um, you can retrieve your documents. So if you're in a case where you break your phone or you, know, you, you lose access to, to uh, whatever, um, whatever, wherever your documents were, you can always just sync up with DocuShield and grab all that stuff that you've backed up. So the way I kind of see it is mm -hmm. like a self-custodial OneDrive. And OneDrive, for those who have used it, is kind of like, mm -hmm. it's basically just like Microsoft solution to like cloud storage, or you could say a self-custodial Google Drive. And I think using mm -hmm. NFTs with that is really, really cool because mm -hmm. NFTs are basically the the established way of digital ownership right i don't think everything needs to be tokenized uh nfts do have a use case in this field so i think that's really cool um so uh when it comes to like i guess let's let's just dive into the ido you guys have your upcoming ido for your doc token yes sir. i believe that's uh early june uh on mm -hmm. kd launch so uh i, I just yeah. want to kind of talk about will you guys be listing on kd swap uh, after, uh, I guess the, uh, IDO. Yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, as soon as our token is released, we are going to be listing on KD swap. Um, but, the, um, there is a three months. So the way our IDO is kind of set up to break it down for people who, um, are new to uh, DocuShield is we have two IDOs slated. The first one is to finish up production. Um, of the app and of the uh, accompanying software that's going to be uh, released as well over the next uh, few months. So, um, you know, a lot has went into it already and we're pretty far on our development. We, be we began uh, public beta testing or excuse me, MVP testing today uh, with a closed group of people that we had signups for. And, um, you know, that was all just bootstrapped and, you know, we've taken it pretty far and I'm, I'm really happy with what we've got. But, you know, with the community behind us, we're going to be able to just expand on that um, wildly and really do what we want to do in the space, um, focusing on, you know, that personalized storage solution. Uh, and like you said, it's only it's it's one custodial. It's only on your side, non-custodial on our side. Um, you know, you guys are in charge of of um you know uh, remaining at, remaining uh, the accessibility or maintaining the accessibility now to kind of uh put things into perspective though too um now uh, when onboarding mass adoption you know is what 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 we're going for there also has to be some integration with web2 and has to be some kind of format that people are used to using right so we have two different account types one's basic and one is anonymous the basic account, you can sign up with your uh, Facebook, sign up with your Google account or your Twitter account. And, um, you know, it utilizes those channels just like most apps. And there's also the anonymous way, which is the traditional, you know, uh, Web3, 12 words, um, you know, unlocking your account, um, wallets uh, solution. So anyway, yeah, the, uh, the IDO number one is going to be geared towards just us <clears throat> bringing this product to life in the way that we envision and also creating an infrastructure that's going to support other privacy solutions as well. Um, and we can get into that more later. Now, the second IDO is going to be, they're going to be three months apart, is going to be to bootstrap our marketing, right? And to really be able to put us out there um, as far as competing with what's what's already out there and not even competing, but letting people know that there is uh, a 
a solution out there that's pretty much like the evolution of document security and um, guide them more that way. And, um, you know, uh, it is a really competitive market. I mean, um, some of the uh, big boys like Dropbox, they're um, they're in You know what they spend on marketing is is almost as big as the the total market cap of the Kadena ecosystem. So, but I mean, uh, we're used to a lot of guerrilla tactics when you know engaging in marketing, and it's something I've done for a living for a while. So, um, you know, I'm confident that that we can definitely get the word out, and the best way to do that is word of mouth and engaging with the community and putting out a product that has quality. So that's what the second idea is for, just getting all that, all, all the words out and, you know, um, kind of making it spread. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so you talk a little bit about like uh, how you're familiar with some marketing tactics and other stuff like that. So I think mm -hmm. that also raises an important question about the team at DocuShield. So uh, can we get a little more insight on that? Absolutely. Now, um, we had our team do a, when we first announced our IDEO, we had an, a webinar where the team came on and said a few words and we were all, you know, first and last name. You could see who we are, uh, who our developer is. Um, our main uh, developer, Abdur, came on and, um, you know, explained things from his side. So um, if you guys go to our YouTube channel, you're more than welcome to take a look at that. But, you know, my team is pretty much, cons it pretty much consists of people that I have a history of working with. And when you have, uh, you know, that kind of synchronicity between people, things just kind of flow and things tend to happen. So uh, my team's really driven. Um, and like I said, people I've worked with in the past, um, I've, I've been doing the, the marketing thing for a while for um, it's mostly been B2B with banks and, um, you know, um, print services, things like that. But um, yeah, I understand the, the, the flow and the, um, you know, putting some automation behind it. So, um, and that's also given me the opportunity over the years to really, to really um, create a network for myself of developers that are out there, you know? So just over years and years of using different people for landing pages or different solutions, um, you know, I've, we've got a pretty extensive network and um, I believe in truly utilizing everybody for what their skill set is, you know? So no matter what that is, everybody has a strength somewhere you know, if you're looking for it and um, being able to pull together a team, you know, after recognizing those strengths is something that is, uh, that has worked, that has worked wonders so far. So yeah, as far as full-time people that uh, we have on right now, I have um, three, four of us here <clears throat> uh, in California. Um, and then we have some other full-time that are extended about, uh, about three other full-time employees, mostly on the development side. And um, we are looking to onboard a few more strategically as we continue to develop the product. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, definitely experienced team there. And yeah, I mean, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely need that sort of transparency, like you said, with that webinar mm -hmm. and the uh, full doxing. Definitely need in the crypto space, mm -hmm. especially in an early ecosystem like Adena. So that's really cool. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess, and I, I usually don't like to ask these kind of questions, but. Sure when launch of the app <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so yeah man um definitely my my first initial um projection was okay cool we're gonna do this before the end of the year but you know our team has worked so well together that we're at a place where we're releasing the mvp now and um to be perfectly honest with you man i am really happy with with where we're at um the fluidity behind um the way things operate on the app so i mean we're we're definitely going to be um as far as development the app will be finished by the end of by the uh by the second idea by the time that comes now there's also the um the underlying infrastructure that we're working on which we're getting a head start on pretty much right now but yeah by by the time ido2 comes around we're going to have something fully ready to go to put in the in the hands of the public on the different app stores and i'm really confident to say that and we are you know the next phase is um setting up our ipfs network we're currently interacting with ipfs but we are not running on our private networks at the moment so anybody who's testing with the mvp we're letting them know that yes we are using ipfs for file storage uh and for decentralization but right now it's public ipfs so the next thing we're gonna we're gonna tackle um starting next month the beginning of june in a couple of days um is going to be um building those private networks and i've already uh reached out and found some people who have you know worked at pinata and different uh places that work pretty strongly uh, or have IPF, IPFS at the center of their, of their business model. And um, we're going to 
you know, put the node program together, put a beautiful uh, user interface on it to make things easy and begin testing, man, you know? Uh, so I feel like our process has been laid out pretty well. Um, our roadmap is there internally that we see and we kind of stick to. And um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's all been as, 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 as good as I could hope for. Of course, there's always little setbacks and things, but you know, when, when working with software, but yeah, man, I am, um, uh, I'm really grateful that things have been smooth so far and everything that we've wanted has kind of come to life, you know? Oh yeah, totally. I think like the Kadena ecosystem is like a, it's, it's pretty much a huge success right now. Like everyone's building in the bear. You, you'd expect mm -hmm. a lot of these projects to kind of just disappear at, during the bear mm -hmm. when Kadena is kind of going down. That's, that's kind of seen in some earlier blockchains, but I feel like we're only getting new projects every day. So I think that's really cool. Um, <laughs> And when mm -hmm. you talk about usability and, you know, uh, user experience and user interface, are we going to see gas stations when it comes to like on-chain transactions with DocuShield? Well, yes. Yeah. So the, uh, the, the thing with, with onboarding, you know, um, the rest of the world outside of the crypto realm is they don't understand what gas is. They don't understand, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really make any sense, you know, to try to introduce this entire concept, which made Kadena something that was ideal, you know, being able to set it up so that we can eat the gas. And then we just can kind of um, uh, account for that in our expenses, you know, and that will reflect on the price, uh, not of the token, but of the price that we're charging the users to upload in doc token. <clears throat> and the way that's kind of kind of kind of going to work is that, say, you get the app, right? And um, you want to upload a birth certificate and secure that document. So you'll go in, you know, uh, scan that document bring it into the application and then it'll ask you um would you like to secure this document you'll secure the document then it'll say okay based on the file size it'll give you a um a price like in the in um in doc tokens right so i like to compare it a lot to the touch tunes application which is like the digital jukebox like if i'm at a bar and you know i want to play a song i can look up the song and then it'll say hey to play this song you need two credits say okay cool so it'll say here do you want to buy 20 credits or $10 worth of credits, $20 worth of credits, $50 worth of credits. I'll say, you know what, I'm going to buy $10 worth of credits. Now I use two of those to play the song that I want. And I have eight just sitting there and I don't have to use them now. I can use them whenever I want. It's a pay as you go type of model. And um, that's going to be kind of how we're, we're pushing this out to the public as uh, here you go. There's no monthly membership anything like that. But to secure this document, it's going to cost this much, you know, and we're trying to put our price point for profit for profitability and um you know the long-term sustainability of the company um the sweet spot is right between 25 to 50 cents a gigabyte and um i'm gonna actually put out a medium article this by the by this weekend that explains the breakdown of that and you know the life cycle of a user and all that different stuff uh that we've looked into but that's that's the sweet spot to um not be too expensive and to be um something that is a viable solution for for anybody a quarter to 50 cents a gigabyte we're still playing with the numbers um where to exactly introduce it at but it's a yeah it's a pay-as-you-go model so they're not going to see anything about gas that's going to be built into our um to our costs right we're going to eat that and then um and that'll reflect you know so instead of a 25 cents if we have to move it up to you know 30 cents a gigabyte to facilitate that then then that's that's what we're going to do you know looking at things strategically Oh yeah, definitely uh, a needed factor because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up something here. So today mm -hmm. I kind of there was kind of a surprise lesson in my if for, so for those who don't know me, uh, I'm actually in high school, um, mm -hmm. and basically we had I I take personal finance so mm -hmm. as one of my courses, and we actually had a surprise course about crypto today. Uh, wow! And it was, yeah, it was really cool, which is the first time that they've done it. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. We talked a little bit about uh, NFTs and crypto and other stuff like that. And I think a lot of people like were actually kind of interested in it. And then mm -hmm. uh, obviously when it, w what they'll probably be introduced to first is like stuff like Ethereum uh, mm -hmm. and the experience on Ethereum, especially for, you know, kids in high school who don't have like a lot of money and they have to all of a sudden, you know, drop $20, $60 for, for gas, uh, you know, mm -hmm. is, isn't the best experience, especially um, if they're just getting into it, they're probably going to be, you know, they're they're going to want to move away. And really, the next the next crypto adoption wave is probably going to be in uh, teenagers and Gen Z and other stuff like that. 
mm-hmm. other other up and coming generations. So I think like when it comes to gas stations on Kadena, they should be utilized by every app. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really glad to see you guys are doing that. Absolutely, man. And that's 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 what's important. You know, I wanted to feel like like a normal web two app to them. There's, you know, no real barrier for entrance as far as expanding your knowledge or anything like that. Um, it'll be like, oh yeah, also just so you know, um, we're running on the blockchain. And um, you know, they'll be like, what? And then that gives us the opportunity um in the app to just kind of throw up little lessons and stuff, like when they log in, like, hey, want to learn more about Kadena? And like Coinbase does a great job with their app. No matter what people think of them one way or another, they um they make a point of educating people. And that is something that we want to um, definitely do, um, you know, because we're given the platform to do it. And the more people that we onboard into the ecosystem, the better. I mean, the more volume that comes in, the better that works out for all of us as token holders. Yeah, totally. So I think like, yeah, when it comes to like gas stations and stuff, I think it actually does bring a lot of use case to KDA mm-hmm. to the KDA token as well because I mean if if Kadena really is the blockchain to to bring in the billions just think about mm-hmm. how much KDA is going to be used in gas like people aren't even going to really like have to think about what it when interacting with the Kadena blockchain and uh yeah I mean it's just going to be like yeah incredible to be honest yeah man I, I mean the, no more days of you know uh paying twenty dollars in gas to make a ten dollar investment um. <laughs> which has happened to me and you know i've just been so headstrong on it it's like i'm gonna invest in this i don't care (laughs) and uh you know (laughs) it doesn't always work out the best way and if you kind of feel it after too it's like man what did i just do why did i do that (laughs) but you know you 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 let your emotions get the best of you 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 ape into something and you know um we don't want we don't want people to feel that way once it's like man why did i just pay all that just to do this when you know i could have easily just not done it and my life would have been the same right now you know, stop thinking about the long term and start putting things into the how do I feel now perspective. Um, we want it to be a great experience all the way through um, and not think about that, even though gas will be minuscule. Um, you know, that makes it even better for us, you know, to to not have to eat these gigantic costs. Yeah, totally. So uh, I guess on to the next question here. Um, sure. Are we going to see Dr. Shield uh, with some bigger partners in the space that like I guess in the overall crypto space it doesn't have to be the Kadena ecosystem. Are there any ideas forming there or any partnerships forming? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, I mean, we've taken a point to speak. We've made it a point to speak and get to know a good amount about all of the different people that are building on, um, on Kadena. And it's funny because every time, you know, I speak with them, I just naturally think of how um, our solution or their solution uh, would intertwine and intermix and kind of come out with something better. So we do have a um, a space coming up with TechFleet, um, who's going to really say some cool stuff that they got in the works, and they, I didn't even know about until I started digging in and asking questions. And <clears throat> definitely somebody uh, who we're going to want to integrate with. And that's the whole point of um, us building this backend infrastructure is being able to um, you know have all of these different use cases um, on a marketplace presented as plugins, where if you have a specific need, they're all going to be revolved around privacy. But if you have a specific need, such as uh, you want a decentralized email uh, with, you know, that's private, um, you'll be able to use our, what we're referring to as our Postmaster plugin, um, <clears throat> which um, provides decentralized email hosting. And then through that plugin, you'll be able to interact between your accounts that are all tied to our infrastructure and, you know, be able to utilize that same doc token for access and um, kind of make things, uh, you know, um, smoothly intertwine. So I don't want to give away too much about, you know, what we're going to be talking about with uh, Tech Fleet, but there's definitely some uh, awesome use cases that we are looking into, um, including, you know, as plugins. And, um, you know, that's going to be over the next couple of months. There's a lot of work uh, to be done and, and uh, you know, developing those SDKs to put out for people to, to build into our um to our infrastructure but i mean it's exciting and everybody on the team is just super amped about working on it and i think that's what we need like our team's full of passion right now and fire and we're gonna just utilize that man to just keep driving and keep keep building yeah that's really cool and um i know you guys are also going to be using flux utilizing flux which is awesome project definitely Mm -hmm. going to be uh, a very big player in web3 along with you guys Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's cool. And then also, yeah, shout out to tech fleet. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm friends with Morgan over there. Great guy. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
So I'm, I'm really yeah, excited yeah. to see what you guys integrate with them. And yeah, definitely, definitely big with onboarding developers into Cadena. So mm-hmm. that's, that's really cool. And, and to say a quick thing about Flux, if there's anybody that's building right now and, and, you know, has questions or, you know, doesn't know where to start or is looking for a storage provider and, you know, but don't know how to really go about it. Um, I mean, just message them. The guys over there, everybody has been so cool. So welcoming. I mean, if I send a DM to, I mean, the, you know, the, the C, you know, the COOs and the CEOs and stuff, they, they actually respond and they give you resources. And if you have an idea, they'll hook you up with somebody who knows the in and outs around that, you know, um, that type of idea and will help you get things off the ground. So, I mean, by no means am I some superstar dev or anything like that. I mean, but if you have, if you can dive in, learn something, um, not be afraid to put in some work, ask the questions and, um, you know, back it up, not waste people's time but really put in some work to getting that knowledge and turning it into something then i mean they're there to be utilized man it's such a great team i've had nothing but positive experiences um with everybody on the flux team oh yeah i've actually spoken with um dan keller over at flux a few times in dms Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's an extremely responsive team they're you know uh, Mm -hmm. very cool uh yeah very and passionate very, yeah, exactly. <laughs> very passionate exactly. team. I love that, man. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, for any builders out there, definitely reach out to Flux if, if you are, uh, you know, building something. If it's on Cadena or if it's even like anything else, just Flux is your go-to, to be honest. Yeah, and the, the hosting is honestly, I mean, you know, uh, it's dirt. It's it's cheap, man. It's dirt cheap. Um, so I mean, the barrier to entrance to to really being decentralized is cheaper than being centralized. Uh, you know, from from my experience, and I've you know I've been, uh, you know, a consumer of of retail web space for a very uh very long time, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I can tell you that you know just the quality of service you get there. Once you get past the slight learning curve, which they have great documentation for, I mean it's smooth sailing, and you get to pay um your you know for everything with flux and with the flux token and it's honestly like i said it's cheaper probably than 99 percent of the solution of the web 2 solutions out there uh-huh. of course yeah <laughs> I, I totally agree with you on that uh, yeah they're definitely gonna be and i like how how many cadena projects are actually like right off the bat going to flux so we're not gonna have an mm-hmm. ethereum problem especially with like you know uh centralized hosting i'm pretty sure uniswap went down with aws which is mm-hmm. uh, not great because obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so that that was a, a wild day for crypto mm-hmm. so yeah i think the Cadena ecosystem is definitely primed for you know uh the future to be honest just the long-term future and the short-term future as we see especially in this bear market we're going to see a lot more uh projects building on cadena and we're going to see cadena rise to the top in the upcoming bull market so mm-hmm. yeah ecosystem is only growing by the day so i guess i only have really like uh one more question and that's is the app going to be available on ios uh when you officially launch or is it only going to be android because i know that ios is tedious to get uh very yeah yeah yeah. very tedious and you know uh um it's something that uh, we are going to chip away at uh continually until we meet all of the standards necessary or required by us to get listed on the um the app store for um apple uh but definitely going to be launching on on google play now not going to give up until we're on the uh, you know the app store um with apple but on, in the meantime man there if we're still going to put the uh file out there the ipa file and um you know there's tools out there that allow you to without jailbreaking uh to sideload things and and to use these um these other apps so if you want it we definitely are going to make it available it's going to be as secure as the um as the apk file is and um yeah so i mean whether or whether we put it out there um you know directly from our website as a downloadable or we actually are in the store uh nothing's going to stop us from putting it out there for people um because that's our that's our whole mission to put this tech in people's hands and you know um prove the the value of it you know yeah, I know um, some big tech are kind of uh, going against the crypto wave right now. So hopefully, mm-hmm. I think you guys will definitely get on there eventually, It's but it's going to take some time. So 
Sure, yeah. sure. No, yeah, exactly. And so it's something down the road. But I mean, our community here, we're gonna, we're going to make it accessible to you one way or another, and have tutorials if if you really want to get in. We'll put together some tutorials once we find some solid bulletproof methods on doing it safely, um, without having to jailbreak your phone and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. I I, I definitely uh, had some custom IPA files before. They're they're secure, so nothing to worry yeah. about there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, cool. Uh, I think that's all the questions from my side. If anyone wants to come up here or talk or like just ask a question, just, you know, mm -hmm. request, we'll let you on. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, you know, now that we have a little downtime, I'll, I'll go ahead and also just uh, say that we are, again, like I said earlier, bootstrapping that, um, than the node operations. So very soon we're going to be whitelisting people to be our node testers um, and actually contribute to our to our networks by running an IPFS instance and helping with the data distribution. Um, there's going to be a very low barrier to entrance and we're really focused on having a smooth onboarding process. So if you'd like to be a part of that, just, I mean, subscribe to our Twitter page. We're going to have um, signups, you know, for people who are interested. And then we're going to kind of cherry pick uh, people based on their availability and, um, you know, prior experience and then just go down the list and just making sure that from the people with experience to the people with zero experience, that this is something that's easily attainable and um, and easy to do. And um, yeah, our, our whole goal is to make the barrier for entrance low as far as what it's going to cost you. You know, um, there's other people that do similar things, not the exact same thing, but we'll say Filecoin, an example, where the barrier for entrance to participate in the network is extremely high. You know, you have to have loads of funds available to build a computer that they want on their network, where in our case, we're, we're trying to build a more broad network than um, than a small network powered by supercomputers. I really believe in volume, you know, when it comes to onboarding and um, they're definitely going to be incentivized for their participation and it'll be on a tiered system. You know, there'll be some uh, tiers that are free and you can participate when you want others that will require a stake. Um, so, I mean, <clears throat> we're really trying to trying to um, include everybody, you know, and that's something that's really important to us because the success in the long in the long run really does rely on <clears throat> how expansive we grow our network, you know? Yeah, totally. I think like, mm -hmm. yeah, especially when it comes to like uh, Filecoin you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think Filecoin really has that appeal of a, of a decentralized uh you know, mm -hmm. a file storage system anymore. I think it's lost that trust, to be honest. So definitely. you guys are definitely going to be the next ones in line. So. Yeah. And then the, the privacy aspect is something that's not done by, by anybody else. Um, you know, so we're definitely not trying to like, you know, just copy and paste anything, whether it's an idea or anything, we really have a vision for where this whole thing is going. And I mean, we're going to be laying that out to you guys as we go as part of the community. Awesome. So I added, uh, Demian and then Tanner, if you guys want to talk. What's up? Uh, mm -hmm. How's it going, you guys? How are you guys? Can you guys hear me well? Yeah, yeah I, I got you. Is this Damien? Cool. This is Damien. How are you doing, man? Uh, good, man. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I, I've been setting up a couple of events where I'm actually going to talk about NFT technology um, mm -hmm. at an art show that we're doing in a couple of weeks and then another bigger art show in Rosario in about three, uh, almost a month. And basically, in my talk, you know, one of the things that excites me about NFTs is the mm -hmm. fact that um, it goes way beyond art. It, you know, this thing can basically mm -hmm. replace, uh, there's, a, there's a profession down in Argentina called Escribanos, where they mm -hmm. basically run properties. And so basically, you know, you could have, you could just take all that, all that information, put it in the blockchain, and, and, and the profession dies. Um, mm -hmm. Or unless they themselves the, the Stevanos themselves need to get on that. But basically, I was just wondering, if DocuShield, are you guys, mm -hmm. is the plan to do that? Because you can, you can also secure elections, for example, make them more, right. more, um, there's so many things you can do with NFT technology. So and, many you know, things. And, and, <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess, is, is that in your sights? Because, because not, maybe not right now, but in 10 years, as soon as the government starts to mm -hmm. implement these things, um, are you guys basically... Uh basically open to any legal document you guys are going to cover i mean the whole spectrum what absolutely 
Yeah, man. No, I would love to answer that. And I mean, just the more I dig into it, you know, I knew at NFTs at the beginning, you know, when I first did my my semi dive into it, you know, NFTs were access passes. Okay, cool. Now, the way that I learned how malleable an NFT can be, and I mean, the more you dig in what it can do, and as far as holding the encrypted data, and you know, it's just getting more and more as the tech grows, they're getting more and more useful. So, I mean, we plan on when our infrastructure launches and um, you know, there'll be more information about this, but the whole thing kind of ties your account together by way of using these NFTs, these encrypted NFTs that interact with each other when in the right, you know, uh, scenarios um, that we're setting up. <clears throat> so, I mean, we are utilizing NFTs. I mean, honestly, none of the NFTs we've actually put together that, uh, you know, to function on the platform even have graphics tied to them yet, you know, at all. You know, it's more just for um holding that logic and that metadata and using that as a tool within our infrastructure and within our application for granting access so i mean i would i, I mean so the whole thing is going to essentially run around um access nfts and you know any idea that comes up you know we're looking for a way to utilize it if it has to do with privacy and it has to do with security we're looking for a way to tie that into our infrastructure and make it available to people um and one thing that one of my uh, team members brought up to me recently was um, um, something called an SBT, um, a soul bearing token that that um, Ethereum is currently working on. And this is something, you know, that we after talking over it a little bit um, can already kind of like find a solution to. And what that what that essentially is for people that don't know is a token that um, is non transferable. Right. So say I go to this convention. And, um, you know, it's a big tech convention and there's all kinds of classes and you walk out with a certification, right? Now, at the end of the day, the people that manage the convention will send out a token um, <clears throat> that pretty much verifies that you had rent through all these courses, completed the, uh, the convention, and now are qualified to do this, this, and that, right? So that is something that's non-transferable and that when you prove to, say, a hiring company that you've went through all this stuff, they'll know that that's true because the only way you would ever get that token is by performing all of those steps, right? And then this non-transferable token is kind of like your certificate of authenticity. Um, so that's something that immediately piqued my interest and something that we could see a, a million different use cases for. And so as the more we start thinking, okay, how are we gonna do this on Kadena? How are we gonna do this with PACT? Um, you know, put our heads together and, um, I mean, we we got some stuff we definitely want to test out. So any innovation that's out there, we keeping our eyes closely on, and that's just going to lead to us putting our own twist on things too, and being more creative on our end. Um, it's, it's so exciting to hear this because, it's just, like I said, right now we're on the ground floor of so many mm -hmm. ways to creatively use this technology, and and just hearing another one is like, oh wow, I, I didn't even consider mm -hmm. that, you know? In this yeah. Time, <laughs> It's great. Me neither, man. I mean, it yeah, was, I mean, I won't take credit for the idea at all. I mean, it was a big 32 page write up yeah, that Vitalik put out, but I mean, but like, shit, I'm like, wait a minute, we can do this. Like, <laughs> and this is valuable as hell. Like, why not? That's right. Well, you know, I'm mm -hmm. going to have to mention you guys. I got to tell you, like this event that, that is on the happening mm -hmm. on the 22nd of June, um, uh, Nicholas from Cadex, you know, CEO of Cadex, he's going to talk mm -hmm. virtually confirmed with us. Also, uh, um, the C Andre Pape, you know, CEO, and oh, Alex Day yeah. from yeah, uh, yeah. Hypercent, they're going to talk as well online. And then we have like, like this big company called uh, uh, Looper here. His name is mm -hmm. Julian. He's like, <laughs> I mean, it's actually Julian Booty, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> nice <laughs> name in, in English. But uh, basically, yeah. he has fifty employees coding. He teaches at the at the Politecnico. I, it's such an opportunity right now. And mm -hmm. I'm just glad to have him there to speak and and hearing Dr. Shield coming up. It's like everything you're imagining is, is coming together right now. And it's, it's just crazy. It's, it's a, it feels it's the same way, man. <laughs> no, yeah, it feels the same we're way. Very, like... very fortunate to be here, all of us, to be listening mm -hmm. to this um, and, yeah. and being at this ground floor. So Definitely. If there's any way that I, you know, I can work with you guys and get on that roster to kind of share our thoughts with your community, I would love to, man. If I could reach out to you, that'd be that'd be awesome opportunity for myself, and I would love to speak with the people that you're networking with. Um, well, send me a DM and see what we'll see what we can do. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. No, definitely, we'll do, man. Right. I, I appreciate all the information and the questions. Yeah, man. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, also, I see uh, Tyler Benz here. Uh, what's up, man? I uh, hope you're doing well. Cool to see you in here. Uh, hope you're enjoying the space. 
And uh, yeah, Tanner, I also added you to speak if you wanted to say anything. Yeah, um, I actually have a, a ton of questions, but the main thing I'm curious about and at the risk of maybe sounding like a noob or uh, uh, coming into the conversation late today, um, I was curious why, if if it's end to end encrypted, if you could give a, a brief explanation as to why the generation of these NFTs will be hosted on a private chain. <clears throat> so that was the that was the idea at first, uh, and it's still something we're trying to work on. So uh, you're talking about the Kuro integration, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Great. Just to make sure I'm on point. So the the whole idea behind that is being able to, if somebody is trying to get on your tail about something, right, and um, they want to, they know your wallet address and they want to see what you're up to, kind of thing. Like that eliminates the ability to kind of snoop around on your account. Yet there's still a ledger in the back that we can say that okay, there's transactional certainty right here that this action did happen, and if we ever need to dig into that, that ledger is there. Right. So it, it, although it's not public, there still is a ledger, um, but that it, it adds included privacy on your end. Now, things that are, um, you know, cash or, or, or money swaps or, you know, token swaps, things like that will all be on the public chain. You know, that stuff that just needs to be there. Um, for that. But when it comes to the access NFTs and um, that, I think as much privacy and security as we can put behind it, we will. And Kuro is one of those things that just allows us to do that. And then also it allows us to offload, you know, um, the generation of these NFTs to, um, to uh, you know, a different chain that will, you know, just help with the uh, scalability and the fluidity of everything. Now, that's not to say that the technology has all been worked out yet. We have hit some road bumps uh, between the integration of Curo and Kadena, but that's something that we're constantly trying to um, work past. And, um, you know, I'm networking with a lot of experts in Haskell and um, our Haskell and also, you know, because uh, since that's the what the, the language, the functional language that PACT was written in um, to kind of help me um braid these two things together now um <clears throat> so i mean we're looking at that possibility and that was initially from the get-go the main idea but that's something now that is uh that may be um pushed to the wayside um or you know depending on on what we find with further research so software is something that's always developing and so you know those changes happen from the day of inception i mean they're still working on gmail today you know, and it's been years. There's still developers working on it 24 seven. So we don't anticipate that that what we put out is going to be the final version by by any means. And it's only going to get stronger, more secure, and better the more we learn. Roger that. Yeah, I was just kind of curious because if it's if it's end to end encryption, which I would almost call uh, end to uh, block encryption, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As if uh, if it is end-to-end -end encrypted, which I saw you guys were using like the AES um, um, two fifty six, mm -hmm. which should be quantum resistant and all of that, I right. was wondering why the why it would ever be hosted on a on a private chain, and then yeah, why uh, like why you guys chose to do that, sure. and then is that code going to be open sourced and, and viewable? Um, Mm -hmm. as well to, so yeah to answer your question yeah the transactions will be for nft generation and minting will be on the private chain if we can get it to work that way but the um the actual encrypted document and uh and the keys and the uh, the metadata that we're using to tie all this stuff together is going to be on um our private ipfs networks so that'll be uh decentralized and distributed data um and that that data will not live on chain it won't live on the blockchain like your document. It will be um, it will be pushed out to our decentralized um, networks using IPFS, which in itself, I mean, has a lot of cryptography behind it. I don't know if we'd say it's a blockchain, but you know, it's a it's a cryptographic solution in itself. That's uh, that when utilized in the way that we're going to be using is is also secure and and immutable. So um, that's that's kind of the thinking behind that. And yeah, the 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 documents don't essentially live on chain, but um, all the transactions go through, um, you know, through the chain, definitely. And we utilize the technology for minting that those those access NFTs.
And what was the second question? Uh, sorry, I, I totally blanked on it. No, I, I mean, I think that answered the majority of my questions. Um, I'll just okay. have to do a little bit more research. Uh, yeah, man. I was just curious, uh, like the IPFS um, mm -hmm. situation you guys have. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and by, so by, that's by not build. really quantum resistant, but the, no. the AES yeah. is quantum resistant. So you're yeah, exactly. you're sending quantum resistant encryption through non mm -hmm. uh, quantum resistant encryption. So I was just kind of curious exactly. uh, what how open source. Uh, that oh, the open source question. Yeah, yeah. No, when we put it, that's that's the question you asked. So, yeah, um, as with all projects, you know, in the crypto space or most projects in the crypto space, once we're um, at a point where we feel that we're a far uh, that we're at a point where um, we're going to release our main version, everything's going on GitHub. We're going to be completely transparent with the code and all that. Um, but at this point, as we're building, you know, um, we are we're keeping it within our, our team. You know, and I know that may um, upset a few people, but it's a, a business decision that's been made on our end for better or for worse um, with our development. And that's just because I know that with software, you're, you could be running in one direction that you think's the right direction for, you know, a, a while until you realize, ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. The core of this makes more sense when applying this technique or this method or this piece of code or this language. So, um, you know, uh, while we go through that whole, you know, um, finding um, our solution here and testing and all that, we're we are, you know, keeping the code uh, privately within ourselves. But we definitely do and will uh, have plans to make it public and will make it public. Understood. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, personally, I mean, it depends how long it takes to create all of the stuff. I was thinking sure. maybe. Um, like a decentralized programming languages or maybe uh, open mm -hmm. source languages, you know, like Python or whatever. Um, sure. The best, the best, uh, um, I think, is a community driven kind of where if you make like a make something on the test net, right, that people can mm -hmm. use and try and hack, you might learn more things. Whereas if you, mm -hmm. you publish your code at the end and then mm -hmm. deploy, then you're not going to maybe come across or, or realize all of the mm -hmm. potential vulnerabilities until it oh, maybe it's too late and everything's live. Absolutely. And on our roadmap, we do have a number of bug bounties and um, penetration tests that we are going to be performing, um, you know, on ourselves and with the community. So, you know, bug bounties are definitely going to be put out there. And I want people to, if they can, break it um, before we go to mainnet because... Um, we're going to learn something from that, you know, and it's all a learning process, but we really want to put it out there for people to scrutinize and try to break and find flaws in because that's only going to make us stronger. And I'd rather have it happen when we're here with our internal crypto community, who's all trying to build under a common, you know, uh, goal instead of going to, you know, our mainnet launch and telling everybody how safe it is and finding some flaw that we somehow stupidly overlooked that was blatantly obvious, you know. So, I mean, um, yeah, we, we definitely intend to keep everybody in the loop with it and at that point like our mvp the the code's not on github but when we come to our beta and when we come to our bug bounties for sure yeah it'll it'll get up there by that point as well cool that's all i have cool man thank you for the questions okay we have one request welcome pilnik sorry i have a a little bit of an upstate New York accent, <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> hard for Forget me to about it. it. <laughs> so, Pionic, I added you as a speaker if you want to yeah, hi, ask any questions. Uh, do you hear me? Yep. Hi, how's it going? Uh, hi, okay, so my question is like this. Uh, for example, uh, we use... Um, Flux nodes for for storing the files, and uh, my file is stored on the three uh, three instances. And how mm -hmm. do you ensure that if uh, all three instances are go down, that my file will not disappear? <clears throat> well. Um that's a that's a great question that's a great question so um flux nodes is handling the communications they're acting as our nodes and uh in, in that way interacting between the ipfs and in between um you know our smart contracts things like that but um our 
our IPFS instances, you know, our, our networks, those three private networks, um, we are going to have easy deployment on Flux, but it's not going to only be there. I mean, these are going to be containerized solutions that you can host wherever you like um, to participate in the network. And um, so we're looking at uh, at the APIs between uh, solutions like Vulkan and Linode and, uh, you know, AWS and being able to say, OK, you select where you want to launch and participate from uh, makes no difference to us. And so if something happens like that, like, you know, for some reason and I haven't seen it happen, Flux goes down. You know, that the, it doesn't affect our entire network or AWS goes down or, you know, not everything is affected. So um, when we launch our node program, it's very important uh, and close to me myself that we don't just offer one place that users can host these uh, containerized solutions, but uh, a myriad of different options. And um, that's only going to help us with our decentralization. And like you said, the security and uh, reliability of our network. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but for example, my file is uh, 10 gigabytes and it's, sure. it, it, it takes time to upload to 5 or, awesome. or 15,000 nodes. So you, how you will ensure that uh, if, uh, all of them, or, sure. I, I don't know, m maybe no, 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 no. AVS and AVS, uh, Amazon uh, is, is goes down and a uh, file just disappears. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how no, do I completely that? understand. Yeah, I completely understand. And the reason we selected um, a solution that's already, you know, out there like IPFS is because they've kind of already solved this issue. Um, you know, when a file size hits a certain point and off the top of my head, I don't recall, but it's honestly not very large. Um, the data gets fragmented and distributed. Right. So um, kind of like uh, when you're running um, backups on your on your local PC, there's RAID and then there's, you know, different uh, different ways of mirroring that data and fragmenting and um, and putting that data out there so that it's not all in one place. And then mathematically, if you have, you know, out of a thousand different fragmented parts, if you have 800 of them, uh, then you can mathematically combine. Uh, there's enough there to mathematically be able to complete the rest of it and and rectify that document so that's the beauty of ipfs is that they've already solved this this issue for us by being able to fragment this data and distribute it across their networks uh sounds uh, beautiful thank you thank you i, I thought so too man it's a it's an awesome solution <laughs> it's hard for me to believe that but uh, I, I want to believe that uh, my file sure. will uh, not disappear <laughs> So Absolutely, right. man. And you know what? Um, after this, um, after this meet, I'll lead to some um, documentation over on the IPFS side that um, I have bookmarked, <laughs> you know, of course, and uh, readily available. So um, on our Twitter, I'll follow up with just, you know, um, uh, um, a link to that, that specific page um, where it talks about the fragmented data and how they handle that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem, man. Thank you. <laughs> you answered then my question and I waiting for the uh, links. I uh, will do, man. I'll get to that right after we're done. Here. We'll pre-search pre it. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Have a good one, brother. Thank you. Hey, Action. I, I see you're here. I added you as a speaker. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, well, I just want to actually um, help Adrian here. Um, the way it works with IPFS mm -hmm. is actually sharding because that's uh, that's the way we make sure that the data is secure. So sharding mm -hmm. is how the data is just broken up into a bunch of different pieces and scattered all over the place. And multiple mm -hmm. multiple those shards go to a bunch of different people so that that data stays secure. So even if you know a bunch of them go down, you still have your data because those shards are always going to be small enough to where mm -hmm. it's fast for all these you know nodes to be able to you know pick them up rather quickly. Thank you. Thank you. You put that uh, <laughs> a lot more clear than I, than I was trying to. I appreciate that. Man. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. That makes sense. All right. So if anyone else wants to speak, feel free to request. Um, I'll give you guys uh, and then it, I'll give you guys like a minute or two. And then mm -hmm. if nobody wants to, I guess we can wrap it up. Sure. Yeah, and if anybody doesn't want to come on and talk, um, you know, uh, during the space, feel free to always message our Twitter. Uh, you can contact us or even myself on um, Discord or Telegram. All of our links are inside of our, our link tree in the profile. So, I mean, by all means, 
feel free. Um, holler at us depending on what time zone you're in. It may be, um, you know, a couple hours before we can get to you. Um, sometimes, you know, we're sleeping. But uh, <laughs> but overall, yeah, man, you guys can reach out and we try to leave no stone unturned when, when getting back and engaging with the community. So, Adrian, let me ask you this, just since there's nobody asking this question. What's the plan? What's next? How can people get involved right now uh, with DocuShield? Next steps. Thank you. Yeah, man. So I appreciate that. Now, I do a bad job sometimes of shilling ourselves uh, with our IDO, but the IDO is um, it's going to be launching on KD's, uh, KD Launch, which we're very excited and grateful for. And registration for that begins this Friday. So you can go uh, do your KYC, make sure that you're um, all signed up and ready to go because um, the whitelist round will start a couple days after that. Um, and then the uh, fair launch distribution date will um, come on, I believe, the second of next month. So um, people will be able to participate there. And um, from that point, your tokens will be staked for um, three months. Uh, well, we develop and build, and then that'll also be the time of our second IDO. Now, while they're staked, they're going to be earning an APR of 12%. So um, we definitely want to reward our early believers and our our alpha investors into, you know, um, really helping us out because it's really community driven. And it, without without everybody here that would participate, we would be I would be stuck at my MVP to be honest, because we poured so much into it. Uh, so we're really uh, counting on you guys and appreciate that. And no matter what happens, we are going to push forward and we have something amazing that we want to share with you. So that's going to be the next step. And then um, after that, um, and sign up to um, get involved with the node operations. Um, there's going to be a tier where there's um, no monetary um, costs in order to engage. So um, I mean, don't let any uh, financial restraints uh, prevent you guys from reaching out. I mean, because the vast, uh, you know, the <clears throat> how big our network is means a lot more than how much people are staking down and how big their computers are. We want, um, you know, as many participants as we can to add to the stability. That's awesome. Now, how do I keep up um, with what's going on? Yeah. What's the way to like, get updates from you guys? <laughs> So yeah, Twitter is the best place. Twitter, definitely the best place. That's where we put everything out on. Um, if we release a Medium article, we put it on Twitter. If I send a newsletter out um, to our people that sign up for the newsletters, then we also put the HTML version, a link to it on Twitter. So there's no better place than where you are right now to um, you know stay, stay in touch with us and uh, keep up with, with everything we're doing. So Twitter's our home base for sure. Good stuff, man. I appreciate it. No, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. <laughs> I would have totally forgot all that stuff. So uh, thank you, man. <laughs> and uh, I guess if anyone still wants to speak, feel free to request. Or as Adrian said, you guys can go uh, into their Discord. Just let them know you're in the space and ask a question. We need to have some like uh, Jeopardy music playing in the back when this happens. The space so here's can be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're fun, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. That <laughs> that, that's 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 where like it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, man. <laughs> cool, man. Well, I'm gonna get back to the action. Um, you know, um, sync up with the team and await uh, any of your guys' questions. Um, here, uh, manning the manning the PC today. So. Um, you guys, thank you for your time. And I mean, by all means, uh, reach out, please. All right. Yeah. Thank you for coming, Adrian. It was a really fun uh, and educational AMA today. Hopefully we can do it again sometime later on when, you know, DocuShield is launched. We can mm -hmm. have a, a kind of one-on-one AMA. That'd be pretty mm -hmm. cool. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. And thank, thank you. you for all that you're doing in the community, man, educating people, uh, you know, uh, swinging the hammer down on any FUD that comes through. I mean, we all see uh, how active you are the, out there, man, and that, that really helps us all out, brother. Thank you. That wraps it up for another amazing AMA. Thank you very much for listening. Here at KPN, we strive to bring an open platform for projects being built on Kadena to present themselves to the community. Please ensure to do your own research on each project before investing. Also ensure to follow all our social media from Twitter to subscribing to our weekly newsletter to ensure you are up to date on everything KDA related. You can find the links directly on our SoundCloud profile page. Thank you and take care.